Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our 2021 NCAA Men's College Cup preview press conference this afternoon. Uh, we're joined first by the head coach of the number eight seed, the Clemson Tigers, who will play number four seed Notre Dame uh, in our first game on Friday at 6 p.m. at Salem Stadium uh, at Wake Met Soccer Park. Uh, coach, I'll open up to you first, just kind of a statement on having Clemson uh, back in the College Cup. No, we're very proud to uh, represent Clemson U University in the College Cup. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's an honor. It's a great group uh, in looking forward to the matches this weekend over in Cary. Obviously a great venue uh, for college soccer. It's been a good home for college soccer over the years. Uh, excited to, uh, to participate with the other uh, teams, Georgetown, Washington, and Notre Dame and congratulate everybody for uh, getting to this point. Just a reminder, if you have questions for Coach Noonan, please use the uh, raise hand function and we'll start uh, with Matt Vereen. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, Coach, I guess just first off, looking back on the, the Oregon State game, just what did you like here this late in the season about seeing your team kind of the most important thing, finding a way to win and, and keep the season alive? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, we discussed through the course of the week. Uh, well, first and foremost, Oregon State is an outstanding team and was deserving of the number one seed in the tournament. Um, but we talked all week about doing something that's, you know, very, very difficult. And I don't care what sport it is uh, to go across country uh, and play a number one team or a championship caliber team and to come away with a result. Uh, is something that's very, very difficult. And our guys found a way to get that done uh, and was very proud of them, uh, you know, in the moment. We've had some heartbreaks over the course of the last couple, three or four years when it comes to penalty kicks, and it was just our time. Matt, go ahead if you've got another one. Uh, yeah, yeah, Coach, I guess now you match up with a Notre Dame team that you faced earlier in the year that, that got the best of you in a 2 0 one that you saw a lot of offensive opportunity but weren't able to come out with the win. Just what's the message now headed into a rematch with them? Well, we talk all the time about 99% concentration for 100% failure in our game, right? And we played extremely well in the Notre Dame game the first time around and didn't take our moments and, and you know, had some lapses there towards the end of the game. And uh, Notre Dame came away with a win. We, since then, we've gone on to seeing that Notre Dame is a very resilient, tough team to play against defensively. They don't concede a lot of goals. And, uh, you know, obviously their championship caliber team winning the ACC uh, tournament and now advancing to the College Cup. Uh, John Blau, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about George Marks. Um, he's obviously come up in some big moments for you guys uh, in the postseason. Um, how much have you seen him grow just from the, the guy you recruited back in Raleigh uh, to the goalie he is today that's making those huge plays for you guys? Yeah, I think it, it, if you're talking in a scale of 1 to 10, you're going to 11 in terms of his growth uh, as a young man and as a goalkeeper. He uh, – you know, he came to us and, and he certainly had a lot of talent, but there was uh, a little bit of a false confidence there as to who he was, I think, as a young man and also as a, as a goalkeeper. And I think now what you find is probably one of the most mature uh, dialed in athletes that maybe I've ever coached. Uh, and he's come he's come a real long way in terms of his talent. Um, every facet of his game has improved and a lot of credit's got to go to Camilo Rodriguez, our goalkeeper coach who's worked with him over the, over the last four years um, to get him there from, you know, his reading the game behind the line to his distribution. I mean, he was always a great shot stopper, but <clears throat> even, you know, commanding his box and, uh, and then now, uh, you know, saving penalties and, uh, and penalty kick shootouts and having the steal to be able to, to stand up and do that and win games for his team. He's, he's come a, a long, long way. He's a captain of our team now. Uh, when he came in as a freshman, I never foresaw that happening. And, uh, you know, he's someone who, uh, who really epitomizes uh, the Clemson way and the way in, in the Clemson soccer program. John, go ahead. 
Just to follow up on that, you're talking about him as a freshman. He was telling me that he was maybe a little overconfident trying to do too much as a freshman. He tried to punt the ball really far to get you guys ahead and do things like that, that you would have conversations with him. How do you kind of balance that with a goalkeeper who obviously you want to be tremendously confident, but you don't want to be doing too much and being overconfident in some ways? Well, it's funny because we've got a little bit of experience with that. Uh, Cody Mizell, uh, when I first got to Clemson, was here and he's going to play this weekend in the MLS cup final uh, with New York city FC. And Cody was the same, was the same type of, uh, of young man, very, very confident in his abilities, but wanted to be uh, a bigger part of the game than he needed to be. Uh, and so I kept on saying to Cody and I've said to George, you don't have to be our number 10 and you don't have to make spectacular saves. The less you do, the more organized you've been, and it's almost like a referee, isn't it? It's, it's, if you don't see him, he's doing a really, really good job. And if the goalkeeper is organizing everything in front of him, then he only has to come up with one or two maybe spectacular saves in the game, and then his team is generally going to win the game. And so, you know, we've kind of dialed George down to that and refined him a little bit on, in terms of the other areas of his game, his communication, his organization, his distribution, um, you know, and like I said, how he reads the game and helps others in front of him read the game and organize our team but he's still a very confident young man and and you don't want to you don't want to tame that all right we'll go uh, to a's iphone a if you could just introduce yourself and who you're with uh, and then state your question yeah sorry about that i'm on my phone it's alexis cubit from the state newspaper um i just wanted to ask you uh, about, you mentioned having some heartbreakers in, in previous years, but to be able to, to get a win over Oregon State, I guess, what does that just say about this team and, and their ability to kind of get the job done in a clutch moment? They're very resilient and they're very experienced. Um, I think you can go back to the Kentucky game. You know, we were winning that game one nothing uh, into late stages of the game. Kentucky, also an outstanding team, scores to tie the game. And you know, within two minutes, we score the winner at the at the at the death of the game. Um, so our team's been in tight moments. Uh, they they don't rattle. They you know they just keep at the job in the process of of trying to win the game. And that was the case. Oregon State scored you know in the first half pretty early, and uh, we made a little bit of an adjustment. Uh, in the second half, we were much better. Had chances. Uh, to score, did score with five minutes left, but also uh, also had good chances to win the game in the, in regulation and overtime. So, you know, we just stay at it until the clock runs out. And, and I think that that, it, you know, it's a testament to the, the senior leadership in the team. You know, we've got 11 seniors, uh, guys who've been here, guys who have that experience, and you really can't replace that. Alexis, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, just one more on, a, I guess, a broader scale. You've obviously had a lot of success during your time. Um, you know, you guys have had some deep runs. What's the key to kind of establishing that tradition and being able to have the success that you've been able to have there at Clemson? Well, it starts with having really good players, um, you know, and, and we've been blessed with that. You know, obviously, uh, last year we had a number of guys go on to the MLS and we've had that happen. You know, Robbie Robinson was a Herman Trophy winner two years ago. We just found out today that Oscar Algren has been uh, named a semifinalist for the Herman Trophy. So it really starts with, uh, with good players and, and a, a big, a lot of that credit goes to our recruiting coordinator and associate head coach, Phil Jones, who's been with us for the 12 years here at Clemson. The next piece is having great support from the university and our administration. Our facilities are, you know, continue to get better and better and attract teams uh, and players. Uh, we're gonna host, the new MLS Charlotte team for their preseason. And there is, and then the last thing is, there is nothing better than playing at Riggs Stadium. You know, it's an iconic college soccer stadium that our fans make uh, an incredible place to be able to play. And there's no place better in college soccer to play in front of our fans. And we're hoping that we're gonna be able to turn Cary Orange uh, and give it a, a, a semi Riggs feeling this weekend. All right, we'll go back to Matt Marine. Yeah, Coach, kind of what you just talked about right there, but earlier you were talking about the challenge of going all the way across the country to face Oregon State. What's the advantage now to playing a lot closer to home and, and probably being able, able to have a lot of fan support right there, right behind you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's massive. Um, 
you know, it, it's, uh, you know, we, we were very, we were in carry last year, lost in penalties to Marshall, who obviously went on to win the tournament. Uh, and, and we were hoping that we could do the same thing last year in terms of making carry a, a more of a home field advantage. And, you know, with the, uh, again, the buzz that's gone on here at Clemson since we got back from Oregon with our alums, the students, uh, and, you know, just the whole university, uh, I'm pretty excited about uh, Friday night and what it's going to look like on Friday night. Uh, back to John Blau. Go ahead, John. I just wanted to ask another question about George, just that uh, penalty kick situation, uh, the last one against Oregon State. Uh, the guy seemed to really be herky-jerky. You tried to take him in a bunch of different directions, and uh, he's calm about it and made the save. I mean, how much has, has George improved just in those penalty kick uh, situations to have the discipline to, to make a save like that in the final situation? Well, he actually made two, and uh, it's a – he he's gotten immensely better. Uh, you know, last year we took him out in the, in the penalties against Marshall. Um, our, our other goalkeeper had, uh, it kind of done a little bit of a better job was a little bit bigger and, and, and took up more of the goal. Um, and like any great player, George took that as a, uh, a little bit of a front and he went to work and, and worked on it all throughout the summer and, you know, this fall and he's, uh, you know, he's gotten better. He's gotten much better. And, you know, I'm really proud of George, obviously. And, and that, you know, when you have someone like that, who, who really, you know, takes his craft and works at it with the way that George does, you know, it, it's just great to see the fruits of his labor pay off. Yeah, we might have time for one or two more. If anybody has any additional questions for coach, uh, coach, just a quick one, just, this season, the uniqueness of it, you were playing in the winter and then, you know, championship in the spring in April and May, and then you come back and play again. Just what's it been like you know, to navigate that to, to have and be one of the four teams that kind of has played this full year and still be here standing at the, at the end of it in the college cup. It's awesome. You know, I think that this is something, this is something that, you know, 202 other teams or 204 other teams wish they were doing. And, and, you know, I think that the experience that we had last year, uh, would is wonderful and, and probably should be and could be the future for our sport uh, if we get the 21st century model passed. Uh, you know, I think that every FAR in the country right now should be talking to their administrations about having our championship in the spring uh, because right now I know Notre Dame has exams next week. We're in the middle of exams right now and we're pulling kids out, you know, to play in two of the biggest games, hopefully, of their their lives. So I think a more balanced schedule like we uh, displayed last year in, in the ACC is, is what the future of the game should hold for um, the health and welfare of the players, uh, for their academic concerns, and also for the, for the growth of the game. So fantastic that we're here, fantastic that we're still, uh, still standing, and, and hopefully that'll be the case come Saturday morning. One more, if anyone check real quick. All right, Travis Clark uh, from Top Drawer Soccer. Uh, last question for Coach Newton. Uh, yeah, Mike, what is it like to play in a championship game? I know what kind of a different vibe does it give to play a familiar opponent? You know, a Notre Dame, a team you see usually every year, a team you played before in a season. Does that, you know, is it a advantages, disadvantages? I'm just curious on uh, your take. No, like I said earlier, Travis, that the um, – if you're playing in the college cup, all four teams are outstanding. Um, and we're just looking at a, you know, it's Notre Dame. Yes, we have some familiarity with them, but at the same point, it's an outstanding team and it's a championship caliber team, like I said. Um, so, you know, it, it's going to be a great game. Uh, and, it, you know, they are extremely well coached. They're, you know, Notre Dame athletes are always well disciplined and, and, and really good sportsmen. And we're looking forward to, to a fantastic game against, yes, yeah, someone who we're, we're a little familiar. Uh, but, you know, we just went out to Corvallis, Oregon. And most of us have never been in Corvallis, Oregon. And so we've had a, a little difference for the tournament. Mike, thank you again for the time this afternoon. Congratulations. Uh, to Clemson and making the men's college cup. And we will look forward to seeing you out in Cary later this week. 
Thank you, Matt. And a big shout out to Matt Kemp, who I saw on the uh, on the call, who uh, worked with us last year, and he's out in Colorado doing great things. So uh, good to see everybody, and we'll look forward to seeing everybody in uh, in Cary. Thanks. All right, we'll keep things. I think we've got Coach Weiss joining us.